Okay, so I realize I haven't made a video of my XR10 in a long time. I just haven't really had time to work on it. Uh, but I uh, had a little bit of time today. There are a few things. It's obviously not finished. Um, I realized that I showed you what it looked like with the um, paddle tires on the other video. And I figure I showed you what it looks like with the crawler tires. So, if you guys have been following my videos you know that I had already put the 30 degree bent links on the bottom those are bent in the middle for the higher clearance and that I had put those um, aluminum rod ends on the shocks and the links themselves okay. now the difference in this video would be the 30 millimeter Ah, the 30 degree bent links at the top but these are bent further out just to clear the motors and the reason I'm making this video is because I just installed the motors that I'm going to be using for the crawler part these as you guys can tell are outrunner motors now I realize that a lot of people have kind of stepped away from using these motors on crawlers and that's the reason why I'm using them I'm trying to do something different because um, for the crawler aspect of it there's so many people out there that have made this XR10 and pretty much made it right using brush motors or even some brushless motors I figured I'd use this um, 36 millimeter diameter by 48 millimeter length outrunner motor it's um, 950 kV it's made by Tacon cost me $20 each because I'm trying to stick to the low budget build here and you really cannot beat the torque on these motors with any kind of other motor setup I don't care if you use brushed or brushless these outrunner motors will have a lot more torque now as an example of that torque you see how hard it is to actually turn those motors with the wheels and that's just a sign of um, the drag that's being caused by that motor it's not even on, it's not the drag brake that's holding them it's just the actual resistance on the magnets on those motors now good thing about these motors they also have a real low amp draw this one I believe is like 20 amps which is nothing for the 60 amps constant power that the, um, these controllers can put out these are the EC run 60 amp um, ESCs that I'm using for it. I've got one for each motor, and they do quite well. I don't have them both hooked up. I'm just gonna kind of show you what uh, what they can do by hooking up the front one. I just didn't have a chance to hook the whole thing up and program the. Um, the controller and whatnot, but just so you guys can see that there is actually control of the speed on these motors. Um, that's the major concern that a lot of people have when they think, "Oh, outrun their motors," especially if you go sensorless like these. They feel that it's not going to have any kind of low speed control. I think it's just going to be jerking and all kind of stuff. Well, in actuality, when you get a good ESC, that is no longer a problem, as you will find out with this video. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. Turn that guy on. I kind of want to show you, see if I can set this somewhere that you could look at it. Okay. So I'm just going to try to show you um, the actual speed, low speed that you'll get from this motor. Obviously if I turn it 
turn the transmitter on, it'll be a lot easier. Keep it as low as I can get it to go. As you can tell, that is pretty slow as far as wheel speed goes for this motor to go in. Gonna take a close look at the tire, how slow it's actually moving. So, for those of you that feel that an outrunner motor setup is really not gonna work for a crawler, this video shows that it actually worked quite well as far as the slow speed goes. Uh, I'll make some videos of it actually crawling so you can see how strong it really is. I mean, the torque on this motor is ridiculous. Um, another thing that I didn't tell you when I was, um, when I set this motors up, was that, uh, you see it's pretty fast too, when I set this motors up on the, um, on the scroller, crawler, I used, um, 19 tooth pinions. Now, that's gonna make that wheel go much faster than it would if I used, the. Uh, 13 tooth pinion, which I'm going to use for the other video. I just didn't have a chance to take the motors out and put that one in there or whatnot. With the 13 pinion, 13 tooth pinion, that wheel's going to go drastically slower. So, again, this is just to show that these motors, apart from having a ridiculous amount of torque, are actually controllable at low speed and they don't have that jerking that a lot of people complained about back in the day uh, like I said it's because today's ESC's are actually quite good and they're able to control those motors even at those low RPMs without the need of those um, sensors so if you want to go this route I would suggest getting these motors. Like I said, they're $20 a piece. That is it. And they are super strong. Now, another thing that I didn't show you guys, I almost forgot. Um, so you could tell from my shocks, there's no springs. You might ask yourself, what the heck is going on here? How come that's actually going back up? Well, give you a closer look. These are factory shocks. There you go. Axial shocks from the XR10. No, they do not have the springs outside. They have internal springs. I actually replaced the outside springs with internal springs. And I replaced the cap. Now I realize that this is a budget um, build and the reason I did this was really just to stay in budget. These shock absorbers are actually quite good but they have um, a problem which is right here. This cap is plastic when you get it from the factory. Uh, if you go to CKRC crawlers you can get a whole set of four of these. for. A I want to say it was $14 that I paid for them. Once you put these guys on, these shocks are pretty much indestructible. Unless you really take a beating. Come on. Anything breaks, but these guys are really good. Now, the internal springs I actually got from these guys right here. And that's why I have my mat torque here. Those are the hot racing air shocks. Those shocks work quite well for something like that, but the air shocks are not something you want to use for a comp crawler. They they have O-rings in this area, which you can adjust the tightness of them with this little 
now right here with this cap you can unthread it and it loosens up the o-ring so you can thread it back up and tighten them up and kind of adjust the, the gif I guess that they will have but that is there's not enough adjustability to actually make it work as well as these shocks so what I did was I took the springs from those and I put them in here now you're gonna say of course you know you put a spring inside of that shock you're gonna break the plastic seal that you got on top well I've actually had those in there and I tried to break that seal purposely I compressed it a bunch of times I mean I even sat down to watch TV for about two hours the other day watching a movie and all I did was compress 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 and I unlock um, uh, try to take the cap off put it back on took it off put it back on trying to get that bladder to break and it did not break it has not broken to this day I have no leaks whatsoever so that spring actually fits in there quite well and it gives you spring and stitch you need now those springs you could get a hot racing you gotta look around but you will find them be able to get those springs now the reason I did that mostly was because of this when you have um, the original springs in there you have to be careful sometimes when you're articulating because if you're running these outrunner motors they will catch on the springs from the factory one I didn't like that now of course I'm gonna put um, a motor guard around this motor to protect it while it's spinning. I don't want it to hit a rock and, you know, all self-destruct by actually spinning and hitting that rock. So I'm gonna put a motor guard around it and uh, to protect it. But um, I just didn't like the way those springs kept getting caught. They also kind of bind with some of the links sometimes. So I did away with those. Um, another thing I did was to actually build out of an uh, aluminum plate this bottom plate it's designed to extend uh, the surface area for my electronics I don't really like the plastic one that comes from the factory it doesn't really give you a lot of room to put stuff so I made this one out of aluminum one because it is stronger and two because the aluminum I could actually bend so if you take a look here I can make it to actually fit the contour of the link itself so I'm not losing any of the ground clearance when I have that plate there whereas if you use the, the electronics plate extender that you can find on some websites it will actually stick under that link so it kinda beats the purpose of having the the high clearance links when you have a plastic plate right under it um, this wiring is a mess I understand that I haven't cut the wires to fit I haven't done anything with them yet but I will be doing that the reason I put those ESCs on the end is because I wanted to make as much room on the inside as I possibly could so that I could fit bigger batteries in there, stronger batteries for when I'm running the the high KV motors you need something strong enough to run those for these guys, a small battery will do they hardly use any electricity whatsoever those batteries will last you forever when you put them in there anyways, I'll have this guy running in the next video um, show you guys how strong it is and how well it performs with these little changes um, for those guys that are going to say, oh, well, you're spending a lot of money on this crawler. It's supposed to be a cheap budget build. Well, RCP Crawlers website has these links, a whole set of four of them, with this 30 degree bend on the end for $16.99. They also have the bottom ones with the metal, with the middle bend for the same price. $16.99 all four of them so in total you'll be spending about $33.98 on all eight 
of the links. Four for the front, four for the back. So let's say I spent 38 bucks already. The shocks themselves. I only bought the cut the caps. So that cost me about I think it was 14 bucks. So we're up to about 52, maybe 52 dollars on that. The rod ends I got off of eBay. I had a set of 16 of them for about 20 bucks. Um, last I checked, they went up in price, but they're still like 30 bucks, which is less than two dollars each. So let's say I would have spent 30 bucks. So 30 bucks plus 52, that's about 82 dollars. I made the plate, so that's not an issue. This is 20. That is 20. That's a hundred and twenty-two dollars. ESC, that's fifty bucks each. So that's two hundred and twenty-two dollars. Servo. Pretty cheap eBay servo, but it is really strong. It's about twenty kilograms per centimeter, something like that, which is, turns out to be like two hundred and eighty ounce servo. I have compared it to my 208 ounce servo and this is much stronger. So on eBay you can bid on it. I actually got it for about seven dollars but they try to sell it to you if you want to buy it now for about thirty five dollars. I wouldn't buy it. I just I would just bid on it if you wanted to get that. Servo arm cost me about it's aluminum, it cost me about five bucks at the hobby shop. Uh, rod ends cost me about four dollars at the hobby shop. And uh, oh, this right here. Not that you will want to buy. That is the high leverage piece that you can get from Axial itself. That cost me eight bucks. The reason I got that is because that increases the torque that you're able to administered by your servo, meaning that you can get away with a 280 ounce servo whereas other people will go with a 400 ounce servo with the shorter one that comes with the Axiom. So that's kind of like a cheat sheet. It cost about 8 bucks and I didn't have to pay $130 for a 400 ounce servo. The bottom, I used uh, Traxxas um, what do you call it, turnbuckle? Just got the one that fit for size. I used Revo rod ends and I took out the original steering bars that goes in there. It just does away with all that linkages that go in there. It gives you much better use of your steering. Still gives you the whole full motion that you will get from the factory. It just has less play and is much stronger. This cost me at the hobby shop for something, four ninety eight, but you might be able to get it cheaper on eBay or some other websites. Um, you can get from Vanquish the same exact thing made out of titanium for about seventeen dollars. This is a budget fill, uh, build, so I went with the four dollar one, which trust me, I do not think I'll be able to break. Unless I really, really try. These changes that I'm making are mainly for uh, durability because I am going to be hitting this guy pretty hard. So I'm trying to make it survive. Um, pretty much, I think that's all I've done so far. Uh, I realize this is a really long video and it's really boring, but some of the stuff that I've done, not a lot of people are doing. And I'm kind of testing it out. Hopefully it works out so that you guys can benefit from these videos. And um, I'll have some more videos soon, hopefully. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and you got some kind of uh, useful information from it. And like I said, I'll see you guys soon.